Uh, for the last two nights, we've uh, been airing a part, a, uh, an investigation um, called the Sissy Boy Experiment, uncovering the truth. Uh, it now moves to the present, tonight in part three. Over the last two nights, we've shown you what happened more than three decades ago to a little boy named Kirk Andrew Murphy, who got enrolled in a government-funded study aimed at making effeminate boys more masculine. He was just five years old. It was the early 1970s, and his treatment was called a success by the man who ran the study. But Kirk's siblings told us their brother was deeply damaged by the experimental treatment he received and struggled with being gay all his life. When he was 38 years old, Kirk Murphy hung himself. The research that was done on Kirk lives on, however. It's still being cited by those who think they can prevent kids from becoming gay. And some kids, like Kirk, whose parents don't want them to be gay, are being sent to something called reparative therapy. Ryan Kendall is a man who was sent to reparative therapy when he was a teenager. Here's Randy Case with part three of our investigation. Growing up, Ryan Kendall had a secret, a secret he'd shared in the pages of his diary. But when Ryan was just 13, his mother read his diary and discovered Ryan was gay. It was the beginning of the most painful years of his life. I didn't question the world I had grown up in. I thought there was some legitimacy to this idea that I was an evil sinner who was going to burn in hell. And for years, I thought that God hated me because I was gay. Ryan says his parents were determined to change their son. As Ryan tells it, his parents signed him up for what's called reparative therapy with the National Association for Research and Therapy of Homosexuality, otherwise known as NARTH. Every day I would hear, this is a choice. This can be fixed. And, and did I, you believe that? I never believed that. I know I'm gay just like I know I'm short and I'm half Hispanic. And I've never thought that those facts would change. It's part of my core fundamental identity. So the parallel would be sending me to tall camp and saying, if you try really hard, one day you can be six foot one. Ryan says he was treated by Joseph Nicolosi, a clinical psychologist who today is still associated with NARTH. The constant refrain was the religious one, that this is an abomination, that this is a sickness that can be fixed, that you don't want to be an effeminate man, so you want to butch up, that this is something that makes God cry, that this is something your family doesn't want for you. At his office outside Los Angeles, we asked Nicolosi if he remembered treating Ryan Kendall about 14 years ago. I'm not familiar with the name at all. His parents have provided bills yes. from your office. Yes. There have been yes. checks written yes. Yes. to your office, but yes. no record. No. He says that, that your therapy was quite harmful. He said that he was told 1% of the world is gay. It's 2%. He said that you told him to butch up quote, unquote. Never. It's um, not our language. And that when he was sobbing, he was told that it was wrong Absolutely to be homosexual. Not. Absolutely. We do not do that kind of work. When the client begins the session, how can I help you? What do you want to work on today? I have to be seen as an ally, a helper, a good father figure, a good male image. This is what's curative. I have to be the man who accepts you for who you are. When somebody says people like yourself, others are trying to get the gay out of people. That's a terrible way of phrasing it. I would rather say we are trying to bring out the heterosexuality in you. It's still a struggle. At 14, Ryan says he had no interest in changing or continuing therapy with Nicolosi. Did Nicolosi understand that you were there against your will? Absolutely. Nicolosi knew that I wasn't a willing participant, but this is what he does. He takes in gay kids whose families want them to be straight, and he goes to work on them. Nicolosi told us that's not true. And you put the child's interest before the parents, even. Absolutely. Absolutely. He says he's kept hundreds of children from growing up to be gay. One of the researchers he points to is this man, George Reekers a big believer that homosexuality can be prevented. Nicolosi even cites Reeker's work in his book, A Parent's Guide to Preventing Homosexuality. He uses Reeker's therapy with a feminine boy as evidence that therapy can keep children from growing up to be gay. He writes that growth into a heterosexual identity is indeed possible. George Reeker's has done pioneering work in this for many, many years. What Nicolosi didn't know until our interview was that the young boy he cites as a success story, whose real name is Kirk Murphy, 
struggled with being gay his entire life. He committed suicide in 2003 when he was 38 years old. Yeah. Kirk's family says That's the it. torment brought on by the therapy yeah. is why Kirk oh, took his own it. life. But Reekers argues there's no way to prove his therapy had anything to do with Kirk's suicide decades later. George Reekers has done a lot of research. He's done a lifetime of research. If there is somebody who committed suicide, that's tragic. But we have to look at the body of literature. That's what we're relying on. Nicolosi claims science supports the idea that people are not born gay. We say that homosexuality is an adaptation to an emotional breach with the parents, primarily parents of the same sex. So for the boy, it's an emotional breach, a failure to bond with the father. Dr. Joseph Nicolosi simply makes things up when it comes to science. Wayne Besson is an advocate for gay equality with the organization Truth Wins Out. He says a person who is a gay man is a distant father and isn't good at sports. I, for example, was an all-city basketball player in high school and I'm incredibly close to my father. The American Psychiatric Association opposes reparative therapy. The group's position statement says the potential risks are great, including depression, anxiety, and self-destructive behavior. Nicolosi says his therapy isn't harmful and he only treats people who want to change. Does it concern you that there may be a psychological impact on some of these kids? Well, I mean, there's much more push from society to be not homosexual, not to be gay, that's for sure. You're saying they feel more pressure out there than in here? Absolutely. Every day, I deal with people who have been harmed, who were survivors of these groups that try to say they can pray away the gay and change people from gay to straight. And I can tell you, it's, it's incredibly destructive, it harms people at a very deep level. Ryan is now back in school. He says the only way he was able to escape therapy with Nicolosi was by surrendering himself to the Department of Human Services in Colorado Springs and legally separating from his family. But he'd been through more than a year of therapy by then and had already slipped into a deep depression and thoughts of suicide. What they did hurt me. It tore apart my family. It led me to periods of homelessness, to drug abuse, to spending a decade of my life wanting to kill myself. It led to so much pain and struggle, and I want them to know that what they do hurts people, it hurts children, it has no basis in fact, and they need to stop. This is unfair to have these accusations put to me like this. I'm not familiar with the case. All I can do is speak in generalities, and we would never do that to any client. What happened to me is not something that goes away. I don't get that decade of my life back. I don't get those opportunities back. And I don't get my family back. And I will live with the damage that these individuals did for the rest of my life. Now 28, Ryan has plans to become a lawyer one day, to advocate for children, because he says no one was there to stand up for him. Randy Kay, CNN, Los Angeles.